So let's start with NRHM and overview, uh, specifically in the view of the achievements of NRHM. It's got another five years extension term but how do you really in terms of ground realities assess the work done so far are you happy with the progress made well i'm very uh, very 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 happy and uh, of course the size of the country is huge and uh, uh, it is uh, one can never say that whatever we do and uh, is perfect so to have a perfection in with the size and population of our country and uniform perfection is always very difficult in our country, but uh, by and large, I can say that this NRHM has brought revolution in our country. In spite of the fact that health is a state subject, mm -hmm. and uh, since the federal government in 2005-06 chipped in, it has uh, uh, made, uh, I, I think, a lot of difference in the healthcare because our objectives since we launched this national health mission was to strengthen the. Uh, you know the infrastructure of the country and uh, we also wanted that uh, affordable drugs should be provided uh, to our countrymen particularly those who are poor so I can say that today uh, we have almost 25,000 new hospitals I'm not talking about the big hospitals and AMs and all that. I'm talking about the uh, uh, rural area, district and below, about 25,000 hospitals have been uh, newly constructed and as many as 25,000 have been augmented. So total 50,000 hospitals in just nine years time is a big... If we talk about the state of hospitals, the government hospitals specifically, we know that the center is doing much in terms of providing money, but the fact of the matter is that uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of medical facilities, I'm specifically talking about state of government hospitals. Don't you think a lot needs to be done there? Yeah, yeah. No, the first of all, the infrastructure was inadequate. That was not in proportion to the population. Maybe whatever hospital, district hospital was constructed uh, 40 years back or 50 years. And 40 years back, the population was one third of the population what we have today. So it was not augmented. Some hospitals were constructed about 60 years back and no new construction had come up. So we had to construct a fresh. So I think one of the biggest thing has happened that at least the augmentation of the infrastructure has taken place and uh, the new hospitals have been created. So first is the infrastructure. Right. That is most important. And then second part is the human resource. So human resource is totally inadequate because whatever we have, uh, uh, whatever number of doctors we produce, mm. few of them leave, they go to uh, other countries. You will be surprised that in United States of America, uh, the registered number of doctors which I uh, happen to address them is 61,000 and those who are not registered, they are another 20 to 21,000. So in United States of America alone, the doctors of Indian origin are about 81 to 82,000. Similarly, in UK, the doctors of Indian origin are between 70,000 to 75,000. When we talk about the Gulf countries, the number is again 50 to 60,000 countries. And there are smaller countries in Australia. But they are better the off in terms of doctor-patient ratio. So, so that's why uh, we are suffering. And then we have another problem. The problem is not in the southern part of the country and the western part of the country because uh, almost 75 percent uh, medical colleges are located mm. in private sector in the southern and western part of the country. And it is also the government, most of the government colleges are also located in the southern and western part of the country. So rest part of the two-third part of the country, that is central India, northern India, eastern India, northeastern India. Mm. We have very few government medical colleges and we have very few uh, private medical colleges. So, so are we doing something in a direction? No, we have done, I think, uh, in the past four years, because this is one of the areas which I identified as health minister and chief minister in Jammu Kashmir, okay. that unless we bring some change, unless we increase the uh, human resource, so that's why the first priority after taking over as health minister was to change the rules of the Medical Council of India. Okay. To rationalize the uh, land use. The hell. Earlier the land use was huge, but now 
when uh, this medical uh, council of india was uh, conceived that time in 56 there was no dearth of the land so land has been received uh, uh, reduced the buildings have been reduced uh, size of the building almost 25 percent capital cost has come down so it has been made uh, more attractive to set up a medical college then there was a cap irrespective of whether it is a private medical college or a government of medical college the intake for a graduate that is for mbbs mm -hmm. was fixed at 150 irrespective of the size of the building beds and si uh, you know the number of the faculty you have so that has been uh, you know capped at uh, uh, 250 instead okay. of 150 so as a result of which the more intake of uh, uh, undergraduates now we had now a lot of private sector has come up uh, during this period mm -hmm. and uh, whatever number of doctors or specialists super specialists we had in government sector they moved most of them to the private sector as a result of which uh, we didn't have the faculty in the government medical colleges we didn't have the uh, you know the specialists and super specialists in the private in the government uh, uh, this hospitals mm -hmm. So to overcome to that, uh, overcome the shortage, we took two, three decisions. First of all, the student ratio, student teacher ratio, the earlier student teacher ratio, that means a professor and a additional professor could only teach one MD student, mm -hmm. irrespective of the stream. One professor for cardiology will teach one, can, uh, oncology one, neurology one. So that we change that one professor can or additional professor can teach two. And in some critical areas, one professor can teach three. Okay. So as a result of which the number of the seats in PG have increased almost by 70%. So this is a huge just with one stroke policy dishes and the number has and the uh, increased. And in intake of students, students. obviously must have And gone. most of the medical colleges were, new medical colleges were not coming up because the there was a shortage of faculty, medical, teaching faculty. Mm. So we took three important decisions to increase the faculty. You may have a money to set up a college, but you can't uh, with money you can't produce a faculty so to increase the faculty we did three major things mm -hmm. first of all we increase the age of the faculty through medical council of india from 58 to 70 okay so it's a huge so now you people will not retire so you have availability of the faculty with you mm -hmm. similarly we recognize the degrees of five english speaking countries the degrees uh, uh, P, uh, you know, postgraduate degrees and MBBS degrees of United States of America, Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, uh, I recognize. So people can come from there and be a faculty. Similarly, DNB, DNB could not become the faculty member. So we recognize also the DNB can be a uh, faculty. So I think this is also to how to increase the faculty. We have taken these steps. How to increase the MD seats. We have done one is to two, one is to three student ratio. Right. So that has taken. जो जाएगा वो वापस जरूर आएगा अगर आपके पास होम इंश्योरेंस है तो कर लो इंश्योरेंस कर लो रिवाइंड मैं शपथ लेता हूं मैं शपथ लेता हूं मैं शपथ लेता हूं कि 18 साल से कम उम्र की लड़की को अपना जीवन साथी नहीं बनाऊंगा ताकि मेरा होने वाला बच्चा कुपोषण का शिकार ना बने कुपोषण का शिकार ना बने 18 साल से पहले लड़की शारीरिक और मानसिक रूप से मां बनने के लिए तैयार नहीं होती ऐसे में उसके होने वाले बच्चे को कुपोषण का खतरा रहता है इसलिए 18 साल से पहले अपनी लड़की की शादी हरगिज ना करें और कुपोषण के खिलाफ इस जंग में देश का साथ दें ये प्रेजेंटेशन में ऐड कर लेना बाकी अगर कोई बात करनी हो तो मुझे फोन कर लेना हां <laughs>
मुझे ना बेटा तुम्हारी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डॉल और बड़ा सा टेडी बेयर दोनों तुमको मिल जाएंगे लेकिन एक कंडीशन है अगले एग्जाम्स में अच्छे मार्क्स ले आओ वो तो मैं लाऊंगी पापा पर मेरी भी कंडीशन है अच्छा वो क्या पहली ये कि ड्राइविंग करते वक्त आप मोबाइल पर बात नहीं करेंगे और दूसरी ये कि आप हमेशा अपना सीट बेल्ट पहनेंगे और तीसरी ये कि ड्राइव करते समय आप सामने की ओर ही देखेंगे ओके okay, बेटा मैंने तुम्हारी सारी कंडीशंस मान बच्चे भी हो गए सयाने अब तो आप भी ट्रैफिक रूल्स माने Getting back to the nitty-gritties of NRH, that's from where we really started. But uh, what are the really, I mean, what are the stringent steps in terms of containing the irregularities in the NRH? Because, for example, UP NRH scam. How does your ministry really keep a check on that? Well, it's very difficult. I must say, it agree. is very difficult. It is difficult. very difficult. As I said, that fifty thousand instructions going on across the country, whether the new constructions or augmentation. Yeah, I, if I have to oversee this, the construction of these buildings, that means I need at least for one building, one person. That means fifty thousand uh, people. and that my whole budget has to be uh, spent on the supervision so that i cannot do and whether each children or child has been immunized you know few crore children have to be immunized is uh, very difficult of course we have done uh, uh, you know like immunization we were not sure hmm. till i took over it was hey why you will got just lump sum number so many percent up has done so many percent Uh, Bihar has done so many percent. Kashmir has done so percent. There was no name, who's being vaccinated or who's being immunized. No name, nothing. So the first thing now we made mandatory. We don't accept any states just uh, lump sum number. We, it has to be whatever number has to be uh, uh, sent by them. It has to be name based, address based, and telephone based. Mm -hmm. So telephone of the parents of the newborn, address and phone, and we have set up a BPO in my ministry the first day at the uh, time of the launch, and we have a team of boys and girls. And, and financial irregularities, sir. The financial again, you know, our job is uh, to provide the money for a specific purpose. We provide to the states, high focus states. We provide about thirty-three percent for the infrastructure. And for low focus states, 25 percent for the infrastructure, and the rest are for the health care, uh, for you know system. Then it is for them, you know, lot of we we give the money also procurement for money for the procurement. So whether that is really spent or not, so it lies uh, on the interest. How much interest the state governments have, and uh, whether you have people of um, Im impeccable, uh, you know, integrity and honesty. That is for the state governments to see. Uh, let's now talk about a uh, couple of your schemes, specifically Asha and JSSK. First up, Asha. Uh, how do you? I mean, it's been really talked about a lot in terms of this is one of the most prominent faces of NRHM, and it's really, you know, really penetrated well as far as rural uh, areas are concerned. But then, uh, what are you doing? Uh, In terms of its expansion, specifically when we talk about hilly areas, deserts, tribal zones, and also the northeast stretch of the country. Well, I think the Ashas are the only one who are almost in each village, and not in each village in tribal areas, in difficult areas, in accessible areas, hard to reach areas. Mm. We don't mind. Of course, the basic was uh, basic purpose was to provide one Asha on one thousand population. But that would have given us hard D seven hundred thousand. Now we have crossed eight hundred sixty thousand Ashas. That means we have in tribal areas and hard to reach areas we have gone even beyond one thousand population. So at least I can say now each village and I happen to visit different parts of the country in hilly areas also where I land by helicopter I come across the Ashas are there. So I think uh, this is one of the Greatest link between the pregnant women and the health facilities. That is besides the point that in uh, rural areas uh, where you do not have the road connectivity, whether they are these ashas are able to uh, make uh, some difference at the time of the uh, you know delivery because ashas 
while providing the medicine, iron, folic acid during the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. At the time of the pregnancy, these ashas are supposed to uh, take the pregnant women to the government facility. Mm -hmm. Well, in hilly areas, in tribal areas, where uh, you do not have the still road connectivity in spite of the fact uh, that the government of India has done extremely good also in providing uh, connecting each village but some villages are yet to be covered the re road has not reached there so in those areas in spite of our program it is difficult uh, for them to carry a pregnant woman on the horse's back or on the back of some person and to take so such areas are still difficult sir and uh also, Asha, uh, when we talk about it, it's beyond healthcare in terms of educating, in terms of empowering. Asha's also, I mean, they also belong to the same uh, area. Uh, and and the skill development. But skill development is the one of the basics. Mm. And unless skill development, you can't just uh, expect a uh, village girl to know about all the intricacies of the health mm -hmm. and all that. So we have different capsules, training capsule, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So by and large, uh, almost uh, more than 700,000 ashas have been trained. Mm -hmm. And uh, fr they have reached from five, fifth capsule to the seventh capsule. So that's an ongoing program. Whatever new program we might launch, Hmm. For that new program, is a new training capsule for that. <coughs> so it is not that uh, they are totally raw. Hmm. Sometime I get, uh, you know, the delegation from different parts of the country. Of course, they have their own problems. They want salary to be increased, incentive to be increased. Hmm. Then I cross check them. Hmm. I just take them, want to know whether they know something, and they definitely know. And few of them, I was surprised, just are are hardly primary pass, but they know a lot of uh, things about. Sir, in JSSK, uh, in one of your interviews earlier, you said that, uh, in fact, it, it really uh, marks, it, it's, it's revolutionized the healthcare sector. But do you really think, in terms of free entitlement reaching to the last poor, uh, how do you really ensure the well, implementation uh, bit? Well, JSSK, Janni Shishu's Raksha Karikram, which uh, was launched by Mrs. Uh, Sonia Gandhi in uh, September 2011 from Rajasthan, from Mewar district. Mm. Almost 60,000 women were there when we launched this program. It has been very, very successful. I must say there are s states which have implemented it to the extent of 106, 110%. Okay. I can, again, as I said in the beginning, it is not uniform. It depends on the minister concern, the state government concern, the chief minister concern, the what type of mission director you have, what type of health secretary we have, and what type of continuity you have. Now, like in Delhi, well, I stuck to my portfolio. I must thankful to both Mrs. Gandhi and Prime Minister. I told them that I would like to be here complete five, uh, five years because if somebody comes, it may take him some time, how so efficient he or she may be. But the one who conceives the child, he can nurse child much better way than the adopted mother. <coughs> so, what is happening in the state governments, in the most of the state governments, the frequent changes of the ministers, the frequent changes of the secretaries, the frequent changes of the mission directors. The That's an obstacle, sir? That is a Major great obstacle. Challenge. There is a great obstacle. Well, I must uh, thank the Prime Minister and Cabinet Secretary that Whenever there are officers change in my ministry, I tell them that I cannot take somebody from Congress, uh, from uh, you know, uh, commerce or agriculture or food processing, who it will take at least one year to understand IMR, MMR. So I would select the those uh, people who have worked as the either they are working as the health secretaries in the states or have been health secretaries two or three years back. So that uh, gives me an added advantage. Hmm. Last year, I had almost 10 secret joint secretaries have gone. But they have been replaced by the secretaries who have been either sitting health secretaries or ex-health secretaries, maybe from down the line. So it didn't take them time to understand. So what is happening in most of the states where we suffer, that the frequent change of ministers. Like states no, like? I won't like <laughs> frequent change of officers. And uh, that that is also. And here you need a continuity. You need a continuity. 
Mm. So some states were, and this uh, GSSK, as I said in the beginning, this is one scheme. Nowhere in the world, in this part of the world, you may they might be providing uh, free diagnosis, free food, free consumables, free medicines during the. Uh, uh, hospitalization to a pregnant woman, a, uh, a pregnant woman, but there's no guaranteed, mm. uh, you know, provision of transport mm. uh, prior to, uh, uh, you know, delivery and post delivery. That is guaranteed, and for that we have provided as many as eighteen to nineteen thousand uh, ambulances, and the JSK that was JSY, but the JSK further provides that if the government fails. To provide a government facility, ambulance, or they are not be able, able to get, you do not have the uh, government uh, facility to mm -hmm. transport, they can come by private transport and that will be reimbursed by the hospital. And okay. from my ministry, we provide that money to the state government in advance by one year to provide that uh, money with the hospital one year in advance, so that no hospital should say that I do not have the money to provide the you know the transport which you have incurred too. Mm. So, that is a great revolution and now from this year mm. we have brought another revolution. The earlier JSSK was that pregnant women will be brought mm. either she can buy can come by private transport that will be reimbursed or and after delivery she can go back by private transport that will be reimbursed or she can be brought and uh, and go back by common transport ambulance and during her stay in hospital the f food will be free, diagnosis will be free, consumables, okay. consumables will be free, uh, medicine will be free, caesarean will be free and now we have made an additional change De during antenatal care that means during pregnancy if she develops some problem she can come to the government hospital either of her own or through ASHA for as long as she is not recovered, she will be provided free medicine, free diagnosis mm. and postnatal. After delivery, if she gets some complication, earlier the provision was only up to maximum 7 days. Now for 45 days, she will get after delivery also free treatment if she develops any problem. Similarly, for the newborn child. Even earlier in JSSK, since 2011, under the JSSK, uh, for the newborn child, uh, the consumables and medicines which are very, uh, very high cost. Mm. I mean, for a newborn, uh, the medicines are very costly. The provision was to provide free for one month. So now we have increased it for one year, free consumables, free medicines. Mm. So the question is, first I think we need awareness. This is most important and very active state administration, health administration, very active state health participation mm. and very active implementation. States need to cooperate. They have to not cooperate, they have to rise to the occasion. Priyanka Bharti? Haan. ए सारदा बिमल हरिया सब इधर आओ ये प्रियंका बहुत नाम है इनका अपनी इज्जत और स्वच्छता की खातिर अपने लगन के दूसरे दिन ससुराल छोड़ने की हिम्मत दिखाई और अपने मरद से शौचालय बनवाने की मांग की सुना उसने जब सोच और इरादा नेक हो तो सब सुनते हैं जैसे इसके मरद ने सुना शुरू करें निर्मल भारत अभियान आप भी अपने घर में शौचालय बनवाए और इस्तेमाल करें जहाँ सोच वहाँ शौचालय अरे गेट खोलो अरे भाई टॉर्च क्यों मार रहे हो दिखता नहीं कौन है माफ कर रहा साहब आपकी हाई बीम ने मुझे अंधा कर दिया इसलिए चेक करना पड़ रहा है मैंने देखा है कि लोग हाईवे पर हाई बीम का इस्तेमाल करते हैं लेकिन साहब आप तो कॉलोनी नहीं सॉरी हाँ लो बीम पे चलें, सेफ चलें। अरे सुन तो मुझे क्या सुनाना चाहते हो जो सुनाओ मेरी सौतन को किसको अरे वही तुम्हारा मोबाइल फोन 
जिसे सुबह शाम दिन रात चिपके रहते थे और कहते थे किसान कॉल सेंटर से बातें हो रही हैं हम्म अच्छा ये बात है हाँ क्यों क्या हुआ अब बात नहीं होती क्या अब तो झट से बात हो जाती है ऐसा क्या हाँ अब तो ज्यादा लाइनें और खास तकनीक के कारण खेती के माहिरों से तुरंत बात हो जाती है और अगर कभी लाइन व्यस्त हो तो अपनी समस्या फोन पर रिकॉर्ड करा दो वहाँ से फोन आ जाता है और समस्या की हल्का मैसेज भी आ जाता है ये देखो आ गया अरे वाह इसका मतलब इंतजार की घड़ी अब खत्म हाँ। तभी मैं सोचू कि आजकल मुझ पर इतना प्यार क्यों आ रहा है <laughs> कृषि संबंधी समस्याओं का अपनी भाषा में तुरंत हल पाने के लिए पूरे भारत में किसी भी फोन से हेल्पलाइन नंबर पर संपर्क करें किसानों का दोस्त किसान कॉल सेंटर So final word now uh, since you said that states need to rise to the occasion without the help of state without them really coming on board with uh, you it's not possible when we talk about uh, 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 the universal health coverage which up has been really talking about re really see it becoming reality because the fact of the matter uh, honorable minister is that uh, we still uh, have a very uh, poor uh, doctor patient ratio i mean one is to 2000 if i'm well uh, i i won't say not only one is to 2000 in some states i won't i would not like to mention is one is to 4000 also okay so, <laughs> so one is to two ray becomes a average so having said that so, sir uh, so uh, universal health coverage when it so will become a reality so, so far i have done our bit my bit to increase the human resource that i said in the beginning to make it more attractive to set up a medical college whether it is a government sector or private sector rationalize the land rationalize the construction of a building broad the construction down by almost 25% <coughs> increase the intake of the students for the undergraduate made the student teacher ratio uh, increase from 1 is to 1 1 is to 2 1 is to 3 uh, for the pg Uh, uh graduate in to set up more medical colleges to overcome the shortage of the faculty increase the age of the faculty allowed the uh, you know uh, recognize the degrees or five um, english speaking countries so that should anybody like to come here to teach they are free to teach dnb degrees have been recognized to become the faculty members so these are all the initiatives which we have taken at the federal level at the central government level now it is for the state governments to set up more medical colleges in the government sector to convince more in their respective states those who are uh, well off people to set up more medical colleges and unless we have almost the double the medical colleges we have as many as 362 medical colleges at the moment and 672 medical colleges have come up in the last uh, uh, four years only i am hoping at least 15 20 more medical colleges in this uh, year within next two three months hmm. but ultimately uh, this is a subject this is not like defense finance and railway that we can do everything centrally this is a state subject i think we have already uh walked not extra miles few extra miles which uh, and you need these states to walk with you as well obviously <laughs> now they have, they have to keep pace with us <laughs> thank you very much sir for talking to me thank you very much thank you pleasure